God's word, faithfully preached, is his comprehensive equipment for changing lives, delivering them from the shackles of sin, the flesh, and the world, and transforming them into useful vessels through whom Jesus can pour out his blessings. Living Seed invites you to a feast of the truth as God's servant brings to us the word of life. Can you turn your Bibles with me to Genesis chapter 2? Now I want you to go with me to verse 23, 24, and 25. And then we'll go to the New Testament and go from there. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be what? One flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Now please, before we commence our discussions tonight, I want you again to return to the Matthew 19 before you get to Ephesians. The Matthew 19, this time, again we are not going to read all the passages. We are simply going to take one verse. Verse 5 and verse 6. Are you there? And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh wherefore there are no more two but one flesh what therefore God has joined together let not man do what put asunder praise the Lord now I like you to please put your hand in Matthew 19 because we will be will be coming back and front into that passage even as we take Genesis 2 verse 23 again let's quickly read a passage all of you please go with me to the book of Ecclesiastes or what you call the preacher when you get to Ecclesiastes, please, can you go to chapter 9, all of you? Chapter 9, and we would like to read verse 9. Verse 9. Now, I'd like us to read it from King James Version, or from NIV, but I need someone who carries... The Old Living Bible, not the New Living Translation, but there's one Old Living Bible. Do you have it? Old Living Bible. But before Old Living, sir, where is King James? King James. Read King James. Live joyfully with the wife whom you love all the days of your vain life, which he has given you under the sun all your days of vanity for that is your portion in life that is your, your portion in this life and in the labor which you perform under the sun okay please let's now go to living bible to help us it says living bible quickly sir live happily with the woman you love are you hearing sirs are you hearing me, sir? Live happily with the woman whom you love in this fleeting days. Yes. For the wife 
God gives you, the wife God gives you, is your best reward. Is your best reward. Down here for all your earthly toil. Down here for all your earthly toil. Where is the person that carried message? There's one man here, message. Release life with the spouse you love. Release. Relish. 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 Yes. Relish, Relish life. With the spouse you love. Yes. Each and every day of your precarious life. Uh huh. Each day is God's gift. It is all you get in exchange for the hard work of staying alive. Hmm. Make the most of each one. Hallelujah. You are not understanding that passage. Sometimes there are some Bible verses that we don't expect that should be in the Bible. But God put it there. Because he knows. You know what God is saying here? He said, enjoy life with the wife. Eh? The woman that God gives you. Do what? Enjoy life relish life because the woman that God gives you the Bible says is your best reward in all your earthly toil anything else no matter how hard you work no matter how many mansions you built I want to tell you that you have built it for people for rats sometimes for cockroach you don't want me to tell you like that I want you to know that the more money you make sir the more the mouths that will consume it Some of you, you will realize now that for all that you are doing, how much do you eat? Did you discover that as a man is advancing in life, what's happening to his food? He eats less. Less. Hey, husband and wife, are you hearing me? The woman that God gives you, the husband that God gives you is your portion. That's your best reward in life. That's why I've been begging young people not to rush and pick something useless. Because if your best reward in life is a problem, what does God say to husband and wife? What does he say? Enjoy, enjoy life with the wife of your youth. God is expecting you to enjoy your marriage, not just to endure it. When I ask some couple, I say, How is your father? We they manage. Oh. May God not give you the one which you they manage. I want God to give you the one that you will enjoy. The Bible said, enjoy life. Which means that God actually wants you to relish in one another. He wants you to actually find satisfaction in each other. God is expecting that you will be excited in each other. You should be able to look unto one another and say, Thank God I married you. Early this year, around January, I was invited to speak somewhere uh, outside the country. And a couple, white couple, they had been 
wanting me to disciple them and teach them the word of God. But you know, each time, they have complained about one another. So that day as they drove down, I know them very well, they were about to start arguing. And you didn't do this. And this one did not do that. I said, stop please, I don't have time for that. This is a new year. So they were all taken aback. And I said, we are not talking about what you didn't do well or what you didn't do right. I said, can you look at your wife this morning? Is your wife a bundle of problem altogether? The young man looked up. He looked down. He said, what do you mean? I said, is there anything that you have seen in your wife that attracted you to her when you were proposing to her? I said, very much, very much. I said, are those things still there? Well, I said, look, look very well, look very well, look very well. And do you know what I discovered that morning? In the next two hours, they were busy thanking God. When they began to look at what God has packaged in each other for them. It's a pity that many times husbands never sit back to say, I thank God for the woman I marry. The only thing that bothers you is that thing that she did not do well. What of the other things she has been doing well? You are not answering me. Eh? What of the other things she has done well? Somehow, something tells you that since she has done one thing not well, all other things that she has done well is not important. No. The Bible says, enjoy life with the wife that God gave you, for that is your portion. Yesterday, I was telling the sisters that all your intelligence. Auntie, I think you are the one I was talking about. All your intelligence, all your ability, all the grace of God that was packaged into you is for who, please? Is for him. Is for him. You are his portion in life. Are you hearing me? You belong to him completely. God deliberately package all that he has put in your life with him in mind. Oh, are you hearing me? You were, you know, God went and took his measurement before he started to do what? To cut you. Oh, sister, you don't know. You were actually cut deliberately to do what? To fit. You are not an adaptation. No. You are deliberately designed, constructed, arranged, packaged, tailor-made for him. Sister, for him. You are his portion in this life. Husbands, where is your portion in this life, please? I'm not hearing very well now. Where is your portion in this life? Is that woman. Excuse me, please. When you throw away your wife, what have you thrown away, sir? You are throwing away your portion. When you turn your back to your wife and say, go, go. 
What are you pushing away, sir? You are pushing away your own portion in life. You'll be a portionless man. I want you to settle down, sir, in order to enjoy what God has packaged in that woman for you. And I want to tell you that that woman is because you have not understood how God wanted it to be. She carries inside her those things that God had planned to make your life complete. Live joyfully. And so the Bible says, for this cause, for this reason, shall a man leave his father and mother because your portion is not in them. Ah, they say, Bragwile, what are you saying? How can you say I don't have a portion in my father? Well, it's all right. What you can claim from your father, are you hearing me? Is that uh, uh, the property? And I want to inform you, if you put your eyes on your papa's property, you are going to suffer. The reason is because there are others who are also looking for it. The day you go home and you are cutting a junk of land, that's when your junior brother will say, I hope you know that you are not the only one. Make your own, make I make my own. That's not what to live for. The portion that God has allocated for you in this life, where is it located, sir? In your wife. Madam, please, please, that which you are carrying is his portion in life. Please don't rob him. Don't give what belongs to him to someone else. It will not fit. May the Lord help us. So now, what is the implication of that scripture? And that's where we are going tonight. Matthew chapter 19 now raised a very critical point. You know, I'm still in verse 23 of Genesis chapter 2. I'm going to 23 and 24. Now, but I want you to quickly cross to chapter 19 of Matthew and go with me to verse 5 and verse 6. Are you there? For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they too shall be what? One flesh. Wherefore, excuse me, take note of that. Wherefore, that's verse 6. They are no more, what? No more two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man do what? Put asunder. Now, you know, when they say, what therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. You know, my first question, can I ask you my own first question? What has God joined together? What has God joined together? You know, sometimes, when you see a man moving with his wife, and they are joining hand like this, you might think that that is what God has joined together, that he joined their hands. If it is just hand that are joined together, you can do like this. And it will finish. What is it that God has joined together between you and your wife? I want us to check it now. What is it that God has joined together? Because when you don't know what God has joined together, you might not know how to carry it. And be 
this is going to be the basis of the kind of instruction that God wants to give to the husband, that God wants to give to the wife, so that as you are leaving this meeting, I know I could not do all that I need to do in terms of teaching today, but I believe that you can go with a key that will build your relationship in a vibrant way in the name of Jesus Christ. What is it that God has joined together? We read a passage yesterday. We read, I think, Malachi chapter 2 yesterday. We read verse 14. I want someone to quickly go back to that verse 14 for me. Quickly. And then we read 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 7. I want someone also to quickly go to chapter 3 verse 7 of 1 Peter. Now where is the person who is reading for me from Living Bible? Malachi chapter 2 verse 14. Malachi 2 14. 2 14 sir. Why God has abandoned us? You cry. Yes. I tell you why. I will tell you why. It is because the Lord has seen your, your treachery in the divorcing your wives who have been faithful to you through the years. The companions you have promised to care for and keep. Now, where is good news? Where is the good news? All right, sir. Good news you ask why he no longer accepts them yes it is because he knows you have broken your promise to the wife you married when you were young uh-huh she was your partner and you have broken your promise to her although you promised before god that you'll be faithful to her didn't god make you one body and spirit with her what was his purpose in this it was that you should have children who are truly God's people. Thank you. Now it says in that verse, verse 14, it says, and yet she is what? Your partner. Let me remind you, what is the meaning, what, how, what is the meaning of partner? Partner. How many of you are doing any business and you are in partnership with somebody? Aha. Uh -huh. So tell me, what makes him your partner in business? Sir? We agree on all matters related to that business. Uh, is your agreement by mouth? No. Uh -huh. Our agreement is binding on principle and in logic and in law. Okay. What else makes him a partner? You share the dividends of the business. You share the dividend of the business. Do you share also the contribution into the capital? Yes. Eh? Yes. Okay. So when you call him partner, do you know the word? Part owner. You don't know that the word partner is part owner. Actually, the word is part owner, part owner, part owner, part owner, part owner. And as they are saying part owner, part owner, part owner, very soon they, they, they drop the word O there. And then it becomes partner, 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 partner. Partner is part owner. Eh? So he said. She is what? Your part owner. All that God had planned to give you, she's a part owner. So what has God joined together? Everything that heaven has earmarked for your life. She has what? A part in it. When you read the 
Philip, I mean the Peter, First Peter three seven. Who is reading First Peter three seven for us? First Peter three seven. Can the good newsman still read? In the same way, you husbands, you husbands must live with your wife with the proper understanding that they are weaker than you. Treat them with respect, because they also will receive together with you God's gift of life. Do this so that nothing will interfere with your prayers. Do you hear that now? Where is uh, Living Bible? Let me read Living Bible now. You husbands must be careful of your wives. Be careful of your wives. Being thoughtful of their needs. Of their needs. And honoring them as the weaker sex. And sets. honoring them as the weaker sex. Remember that you and your wife remember that you and your wife are partners are partners in receiving god's blessings in receiving god's blessings and if you don't treat her as you should if you don't treat her as you should your prayers will not get ready answers hey you are not hearing now i did ask a question yesterday i think we run church account here and how many signatories do we have three what was the rule you gave the bank any two must sign am i right so when they draw the check and the first signatory signs and the second signatory is not around to sign can they honor the check what has god joined together god has joined your account in heaven together every time you are coming to the place of prayer to claim a blessing from heaven please listen to me there is one person that you cannot do without if your prayer is going to be answered who is that person your wife or your husband i want to say to you brothers and sisters that sometimes you see a man he has abandoned his wife he has said you yeah, go, go away and then he has met another brother said let's just agree together let's just agree together the Bible says, if any of you shall agree as touching anything that you will ask, you will get it. <laughs> and they are doing like this. Do you know that the person you are joining hand with has no signature <laughs> in the account? It's like Baba has signed and the secretary is the next person to sign. But it's not around, or we are quarreling with them. So if it doesn't sign, no, you just any two signature, just sign. You just sign, and then we go to the bank, and I, I even go with him. I said, the other man that uh, is a recognized a signatory has decided to be unreasonable today. So I just brought this friend of mine to come and sign. Will it work? Do you know what will happen? They may arrest him. <laughs> Do you know that? They will arrest him. Say so why is he impersonating the second signatory? I love church prayers. And I encourage us as church to pray. But I want to inform you the signature that will make your prayer to be answered particularly is the agreement of your partner your wife or your husband do you know that we may join hands and we are praying we are praying we are praying we are praying we may even be shaking and shaking and shaking and doing like this and doing like this and doing like this and doing like this when he is quarreling with his wife Will his prayer pass the ceiling? Eh? 
Do you know what heaven is saying? He said, Brother Gile is not your co signatory in this matter. <laughs> Go and bring your bone. Now, except you recognize that actually what God has joined together between you and your wife is not your casual hand. He has joined your account in his presence together. As long as she's alive, her signature is important. If he dies, excuse me, if the signatory dies, what happens now? Is finished. That one is dead. But when he is alive and you are not in agreement with her or with him, you are going nowhere. And many times you are wondering why is it that people pray so much and nothing is happening? It's because the second signatory has not been consulted. You know, many times I go for meetings and I see many women in the church. They are the ones that have come for prayer meeting. And do you know what God is asking? Where are their husbands? Where is your husband's signature in this prayer? It pains me that many husbands don't understand that without your agreement, your wife is not going anywhere. And without her coming with you, you are not going far. What is it that God has joined together? He has joined your blessedness. Your blessing will be hindered unless you move together. Let's check. What else has God joined together? I want us to quickly check something and then I will leave it. Because if marriage was just an ordinary relationship, I will not worry. But I'm realizing that was when I began to be very, very concerned about the condition of marriage. I realize that that day will you go with this man and I see how many young people they quickly shout yes I do hmm. once you say yes I do something is joined do you know what is joined your destinies are joined everything about you is joined all that you can become in life is joined. Your progress and her progress joined. Your efficiency and her deficiency is joined. How efficient a man could be, but when he's joined to a deficient woman, the efficiency is cancelled and becomes zero. Because you are joined. Now, go to Genesis chapter 24. Would you like to quickly check Genesis 24? We have no time to read the whole story, but there's something I want to show you quickly. Now, before Genesis 24, you remember in Genesis 22, when Isaac was still a young man when god told his father to go and offer him as a burnt offering on the mount of moriah do you remember the story now in that chapter 22 when the father did look at verse 16 i want you to see verse 16 all of you genesis 22 16 are you there are you there you know we are doing bible study that's why I cannot be preaching like parrot. I have to be carrying you along. Because I want you to see it in your Bible. Are you there now? And in verse 16. And he said, God said, By myself have I sworn, says the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing, 
and has thought with head your son, thy only son, that in blessing I will do what? I bless you. In multiplying, I will do what? I multiply your seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall do what? Possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my son. My. Now, who is God pointing at in that passage? Who is that seed that is also talking about? This is Isaac. Now, go to chapter 24. I want you all to please go to chapter 24. You will remember that this particular blessing on Isaac, where was it taking place? On Mount Moriah. Ah? Huh? In the land of Canaan. Now go to chapter 24 now. When they went to look for a wife for Isaac, where was they looking for this girl for Isaac? Can you remember? It was in the awe of Chaldees, very far away. Now, go with me. In verse 20, I mean 57. 57. Are you there in 57? Genesis 24, 57. And they said, we will call the damsel and inquire at our mouth. And they called Rebekah and said to her, Without go with this man, and what was her answer? Verse 59. And they sent away Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. Verse 60. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, Look at what they said, Thou art our sister. Be thou the mother of thousands of millions and let your seed do what? Possess the gate of those which hate them. Now, let's listen. Is there anything that resembles something in chapter 22? What was that? The blessing. What was put on Abraham, on Isaac? about 28 years ago if Isaac was 12 years when this blessing was pronounced he was now 40 years when they were looking for this wife so for 28 years Isaac has been carrying a blessing are you hearing me 28 years there's something God wanted him to become and he has been there on his head for 28 years. Now the day they ask Rebecca, will you go with this man? The distance between Moriah, where Isaac was blessed, to all of Cardia, where Rebecca was being blessed in her own family now, is a three days journey. Are you hearing me? How did it happen that when they told Rebecca to kneel down, as they opened their mouth, they've never seen Isaac. They were not there when God pronounced the blessing on Isaac 28 years ago. Hey, how did it happen that they now began to speak and say, Rebecca, you will be the mother of what? Of thousands of millions and let your seed do what possess the gate of their enemies how did they do that do you know what is happening now what do you think God is joining together now is joining their destiny together what has been on the head of Isaac for 28 years now the root said, I will go with him. What have they done now? They have also brought the destiny on Isaac, now on Rebecca. What has God joined together? He has joined their destinies, 
He has joined their blessing. He has joined their accounts. He has joined everything about them together. Hey! Are you hearing me at all? The woman you marry, sir, carries your blessing. It's been joined. It's joined. Brother, are you hearing me? What has been put on your life 20 years ago that heaven has been watching and be praying that you will become? The day that sister said, yes, I do. Do you know what they did immediately? They brought that on her. And what it means is that without her, you won't fulfill your destiny. It's not an easy matter. So, in chapter 25, after they had married for 20 years, they said Rebecca was barren for 20 years. When Rebecca was barren for 20 years, who was barren for 20 years? I'm not hearing you. Why Rebecca was barren for 20 years? Can Isaac progress into his destiny? I'm not hearing you again, sirs. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, what is it that God has joined together? All oh, that you can become in life. All oh, that heaven is expecting you to become. All oh, that God has spoken concerning you from your mother's womb. The day that sister came into your life, in marriage is joined. It becomes, it means, what it means, if you understand the Bible very well, is that in that woman, your destiny has been located and locked up. You can no longer be on your own. Oh. You can no longer pursue your personal agenda. Oh. Wives, are you hearing me? Wives, are you hearing me? Someone say, well, let him do his business. I do my own. You have no other business. Oh. No other business. Oh. My father was not a Christian. He was not a Christian. But I saw something that baffled me between himself and his wife, my mother. Hmm. And I said, ah, ah, God, this kind of thing I'm seeing here, I didn't understand. But it's a rule. What was it? Anytime My mother used to sell meat. She said, she said, she says Nama. So we normally go to the slaughter slab to kill cow and then we will be selling. And I normally carry the meat behind her as we are going from house to house. In those days, there is no scale that you come to market and say, give me one kg there. It's nothing like that. We go from house to house. Menama is here. So, we, we start. Now, when we get, I discover that any day Mama is going out in the morning and she kneels down with her before her husband and say, bless us before we go. And Baba just put his leg on the stool and he will put his hand and say go my blessing go with you all the favor of today will go with you whenever we go with our meat before 12 noon we are finished selling but any day they quarrel <laughs> and mama goes out in annoyance so let's go. Don't mind your baba. Don't mind him. 
will carry meat from morning till 4 p.m. Nobody is buying anything. My neck. Oh, God. Oh. I never knew I was going to be a preacher, you know. I thought I was going to die in, as a butcher. I thank God. God has a plan for my life. That's why I'm here right now. You see, and I will carry the meat and we shall be going together. When we have gone round and round, you say, Mama said, do you want, I said, we don't have meat. We don't want meat. Uh, do you want meat here? They say, no, there's no meat. Do you want meat here? Somebody has already sold meat now. We don't want any. We will go round and round and round. You are hungry. And because there's no fridge, there's no freezer, any meat you don't sell that day is wasted. We can't go back. So when we have traveled, go around the whole town, Mama will say, uh -huh, you see now, now your father. I say, what did he do? Sir? Now your father is annoyed with me. Let's go home. So when we will be going back home, not once, not twice, not ten times. I've seen it every time. Baba will be sitting at the door. He's expecting her back with heavy load. By the time we will be coming back, you don't come. I hope you sold. Mama say, how will I sell? Didn't you block the way? And Baba will say, I thought you know how to go. When you are going, gang, 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 I thought you know what you are doing. And then she will kneel down and say, please, now, don't let, don't let me enter into debt now. I say, okay, go and cook for me first. Can you imagine? We have not sold anything since morning till 4 p.m. And Baba will say, okay, go and cook for me first. Cut this meat and go and cook. So when Mama has cooked and he has eaten, even if it is 5 p.m., he says, okay, come now. Come and go. You will say, do you know 5 p.m. we will carry the meat. We are going out again. And in less than one hour, I don't know how it normally happens. Suddenly we will see and say, hey, Mama, do you have meat? And somebody just died now and we need the uh, meat to quickly do something. Then we bring it. They say, how much? We will buy everything. Uh, where's money? They will bring money. In another 30 minutes, even myself, I'm coming back jubilating because there's no more load on my neck. <laughs> do you understand what I'm talking about? It was then I realized. So next time when we are going out and I found that they were not talking, I normally remind Mama, have you greeted Baba before you leave? <laughs> you know, sometimes I watch that they could quarrel and because I know the consequence, I will come and be the mediator because I don't want to carry load. <laughs> I don't want to carry load. And you know, as soon as that is done, everything is fine. Sometimes, why he is he, see eating? People will come to the house. Mama, is there any meat? We really have need. Oh, and Mama will bring meat. Sometimes we are not going anywhere. People will clear it and bring cash. What was it? What God has joined together. Your marriage is not an ordinary matter. It is not your clothes that God joined together. If it is ordinary uniform that you are buying that God joined together, that can fade away. What God has joined together is your lives. God has joined your, your destiny together. All that you can become in God's program is joined together. You have been joined. You have been what? Joined. Friend, you are joined. You can't separate. You can't cut it now. 
And do you know the way it is? Let me show you the way it is joined, sir, Baba. You see, if it is just joined like this, then you can neatly do what? Cut it. But now, it's like this. And like this. So, you know, you don't know where to start cutting. Because everything is what? Is mixed together. Mixed, interwoven together completely. Hey, my sister, I pray that God will open your eyes to understand that that man that you have married, everything about you has been mixed. His own is mixed. Everything is now one. And so you can separate. What therefore God has joined together let not man put what? Asunder. He's been joined. Hey, sister, you have been joined. You are joined. There's no how you can cut it. You will have a scar. When you try to cut it, what you will discover is that half will be there. One quarter will be here. The one quarter that is left here is useless. Because the other aspect is lost there. So what is God now demanding from wives and from husbands? This is where I want to conclude. Because God has joined them. How? Together. So what does the Bible say? Live joyfully. You better settle down. Help me tell someone, sir. Settle down. Settle down. It has been joined. You are not helping me tell. He has, he's not hearing you. Settle down. It has been joined. This has been Living Seed. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703-036359, 0703-768118. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Make it a date with us next week.